Hey everyone, how's it going? So today I'm calibrating my lenses. I'm calibrating them to my Nikon D850 and I thought it'd be fun to at least share the results with you and walk through my process for doing that. It's really easy to do. It takes a little bit of time. It's something you can do at home. You don't need fancy equipment. You don't need to buy these packages like Focal and other products like that to calibrate your lenses. This is something you can do in body in the Nikon D850. You can do it at home. You can print out one of these cheap black and white targets over here, anything that's very high contrast, and the camera can do it itself. So come along and we'll, we'll go through that process and we'll show some results, how much of a difference it can make if you calibrate your lenses. Okay, so the first thing you need is a target of some sort. Now these are two targets I just printed out offline. Honestly, you don't need anything more than a very high contrast piece of paper or a book jacket or anything really, a painting or something like that. These are available online. I'll link to them in the description so you don't need to spend money on a target. Tape them to a wall and, um, and you know lock them in and then just use them. They do need to be very well lit in order for the auto uh, fine tune to work, the autofocus fine tune to work. So that is one thing you wanna light it. The way I handled that was I just have these uh, spotlights here and I directed one in the general vicinity and, um, and turned on this lamp here and that was sufficient. Okay, so another thing you have to consider here is the distance from your camera to the target. Now this is gonna vary based on the focal length that you're calibrating for. So in the case of this example, we're calibrating for 50 millimeters, and the distance to the target is determined by an equation. So the equation that you use is the focal length, 50 in this case, times 25, it's always times 25. So 50 times 25 is 600. Nope, not 600, it's 1250. So it's 50 times 25 equals 1250 millimeters, we divide that by a thousand because there are a thousand millimeters per meter. So then we get meters, 1.25. We then multiply that times 3.3 because they're 3.3 feet per meter. And we get something around four feet. And that's about the distance that you see here. When I calibrated the 600 millimeter lens, you know, that's a, that's a pretty long focal length. So we're talking 600 millimeters times 25 and then convert into feet, it ends up being about 45 feet. So that's the entire distance. I, I mean, it's not quite 45 feet, to be honest, it's probably about 40 feet from that wall all the way to the wall over here where I have the target. So I use that distance. I mean, maybe if I wanted to be more precise, I could measure it out with a yardstick or meter stick or whatever, you know, a tape measure and go outside and do this tape to a tree or something like that if you want to be really precise. But, you know, for, for better or for worse, I think this approach is fairly accurate. Okay, the next thing is you gotta go to the camera body. Now, I am calibrating here a, um, the Tamron 24 to 70 uh, F2.8. Uh, so first thing to do, just be careful about this, shut off the VR, or VC rather here, um, that's the vibration control, shut off VR if you have a Nikon, or OS if it's um, a Sigma, I forgot IS if it's Canon. So shut off that. Uh, feature because that can affect the process. Okay, the next thing that you want to do is go into your menu, turn on the camera obviously, go into the menu and find your way to the wrench. The wrench is kind of the settings uh, menu that has all these calibration features. The next is you'll see AF fine tune. So this is where all of the values for your lenses are going to be saved. You can see I've saved six out of 20 lenses, um, lens spots that they have available. And then this function here, um, on and off, so this allows you to sh turn on the, uh, the saved value for the AF fine tune or turn it off. This is nice because after you calibrate your lens, I think it's a really good idea to take one photo with AF fine tune on and one photo with AF fine tune off and leave everything else exactly the same. And that's gonna be a really helpful way to determine whether or not the autofocus process was effective. Because if you see a shot and it didn't perfectly work and it didn't calibrate perfectly, you're gonna be able to tell it because you're looking at these targets and they have very small numbers and letters and things like that. And so you can see when something's sharp and when it's not. So anyway, all right, good. So that's, that's what you do, that's where those are gonna be saved. So in order to actually do the process here, you push live view, you wanna shoot in live view here. 
make sure you know you have a pretty like even um, uh, level uh, tripod set up here and then zoom in and focus so zooming in helps you just kind of confirm that you're as, as focused as possible you can do that with the plus and minus once you're in live view and then to focus here you know the way I have it set up is I just push um, the screen and it focuses you can see that that is a nice and focused image now if you go to the next step without pushing this center button here which centers the um, the point with the center kind of focus point here so if you were to tap here it's moving to a different focus area now if you go straight from this option to or from this setting kind of like off off center focus and you go straight from here to doing the um, AF fine tune you'll get an error message and I'll show you what that looks like so in order to do AF fine tune you hold down this button here you push in here the AF um, control you hold that button down simultaneously with the red button here which is the record button for video and you hold both at the same time when you're in live view so I'll show you what happens when you do that After holding for about three seconds, this error message comes out. It says, AF fine tune is not available at the current focus settings. Now, the reason why that error came up is because I didn't use the center focus point. So if I push this center button here, that'll go to the default center. You can see it's the center here. Now I haven't adjusted focus. I already did the autofocus, you know, based on before. And so um, I'm just going to leave it like that, and I'm going to do the, the combination of the two buttons again. Okay, so now I've got the appropriate menu. So this comes up before proceeding, fix the camera in place, check that it's focused. We've already focused, we have it set up on a tripod, so we're going to push yes. Now try to do this with as little contact with the camera as possible. And that's it. A new value has been saved to the auto fine tune save value list for this particular lens. Let's go to the menu. Let's see what that value was. Okay, so it saved negative 16. So what does negative 16 mean? Negative 16 means that it's focusing now calibrated a little bit closer to the camera than it would have done if we had not calibrated the lens. Um, positive value would mean a little bit further away from, from uh, from the camera, relative to the camera. So if you're focusing on a focal point, you know, say a tree kind of in the distance, um, with the negative 16 value, it's gonna focus slightly closer than it would have done on its own to where you're standing. And that's to compensate for a lens that is uh, by default um, over overshooting the focus uh, distance. So that's how it works. Take a look at the photos. Uh, what I did is I took raw shots. I, I forgot here to switch to JPEG, which is my bad. Um, I've just done little adjustments to white balance here um, based on uh, the eye drop um, on the piece of paper, just so the paper's white. You can see I have, I have indoor light and outdoor light, so the outdoor light's looking blue here. Um, and I'll just walk through just four examples of, of the calibration. We can see the impact it, it had. This is starting with the 50 millimeter um, Nikon uh, 50 millimeter f1.8. This is what the shots look like from a distance. I don't know if you could tell which is which, but I think it becomes pretty apparent when we zoom in. If we zoom into 100%, you can see very clearly the one on the left is the calibrated image. Um, it is tack sharp, <laughs> really quite impressive. Um, I think if at this angle, I mean, at this, distance, at this distance, you can read every single number, really a sharp lens, looking great. On the right side here, totally different, right? Completely blurry. I mean, you can read the numbers, but it's still pretty blurry and not necessarily great. And what's crazy about this is I've been shooting with this lens for four years. So, I, you know, I've been shooting with it a little bit on the blurry side, um, for quite a long time. I mean, that's, I guess, a point there is that you don't necessarily notice these imperfections or the autofocus kind of failing you. So maybe it doesn't matter that much, but, um, but I do think that I probably will see going forward a little bit of a sharper image. How could I not? I mean, when you look at the impact that it has here um, 
on, uh, on the image quality and the sharpness. So next I thought we'd look at the 20 mil. So this is the Nikon um, 20 millimeter f1.8, same family of lenses as the 50 mil that we just looked at. Same changes have been made to the um, files just to make them a little bit brighter so you can see a difference. And again, on the left, we see the calibrated image and on the right, the uncalibrated image. You're starting to get the trend here. Um, the right one, in this case, because it's a 20 millimeter lens, I didn't do a closer uh, calibration. I still did it from about five feet. So, you know, these numbers are quite small um, when you, when I zoom out uh, to kind of what the, what the shot would look like. I mean, pretty far distance. So all the more reason why it is extraordinary that on this calibrated image, you can read, look at this. I mean, we're looking, we're zoomed in. I mean, this is pixel beeping, but we are zoomed in 200% here. And look at how sharp these numbers are in the calibrated image uh, with the calibrated lens compared to the uncalibrated. All right, one more example. Um, this is the Nikon 70 to 30 millimeter zoom lens. It's a, um, it's a uh, pretty inexpensive lens that is, I think, an f5 to 6.3. Um, so if we zoom in here uh, to 100%, you know, you're starting to see exactly the same story with every single lens. This one is, you know, noticeably blurrier, I'd say, even though it's a even though it's from roughly the same distance, a little bit further out, I, I calibrated it appropriately a little bit longer distance because uh, it's a higher uh, focal length, but, um, but you know, not as sharp as the prime lenses, which is what you'd expect even after calibration, but calibration did make the image a lot sharper. This is a calibrated image uh, lens, and this is the uh, non-autofocus tuned lens over here on the right uh, version of the lens. And we used as an example the uh, Tamron 24 to 70. I uh, this these photos were taken at 70 millimeters um, after calibration, and I just yeah, I mean we can we can look at the target to start here, and you can see this is the calibrated image. This is the non-calibrated uh, lens. I keep saying image, but I mean lens. And I'm surprised how blurry this is um, to be honest, because I've been shooting with it for a while, and. Uh, and you know it's a it's a very sharp lens it's performed pretty well but not I was not getting the most out of this lens and that's pretty clear once you calibrate the lens I mean these are this is prime level of sharpness here this is comparable to the um, the 50 mil uh, which is really amazing a little it's a little bit closer here, but I think you can also really see it in these in the books here I mean you can read <laughs> 10 best books, New York Times book review for the Pachenko uh, book here. And I mean, that is, that's this distance here. Look at that. And then if it's uncalibrated, it's a lot blurrier. Um, that's not to say there aren't things in the image that would be sharp, but um, that's, that's adjusting for this focal length calibration aspect. So I think the results speak for themselves. And that's really, that's really the ultimate thing here. I mean, this is why you should you should engage in this for your own lenses because you know you're you're leaving this sharpness on the table as it were by not calibrating your lens. Okay, so I've gone through this process. I've calibrated the six lenses that I use most often. Well, that I use. I only have six lenses right now. And I've done this for the fixed focal length lenses, and then for one focal length for each of the variable lenses. For some of these, like the Sigma 150 to 600, as I've mentioned, I did this at 600 millimeters because it just made the most sense because that's how I use it. For the Tamron 24 to 70, I did at 50 because it kind of cuts the difference and it's right in the middle. And then for the 70 to 300, I think I did 70, which probably I should revisit. I don't use this lens that much and so I don't have like a dominant focal length that I use. So anyway, I've done it for all these lenses. You can see here that some of them are negative uh, 15, negative 20 in the case of the 50 mil. That's pretty extreme adjustment. I think negative 20 is the most you know uh, adjustment on the negative side that could be done for this fine tune. Um, and then some of them, like the Sigma 150 to 600, is just negative two, which was actually kind of disappointing because that was the one I was most excited to adjust because I really want those sharp, um, 
wildlife shots where I focus on an eye and I get exactly the eye. So what do we make of this? Well, we make that there are inconsistencies, that every single lens for the most part, probably not the Sigma, but every single lens needed to be adjusted. And probably if you run this same process on your lenses, you will find that they would benefit from adjustment as well. And that's really the big picture here. There's an opportunity to improve the sharpness of your lenses if you go through this process. So one question you might have is, why do I have to do this anyway? Like, what, why wouldn't this be done, you know, with this very expensive lens and camera body that I'm buying? And the answer is, some of it is done at the manufacturing facility. You know, they're doing quality control checks. They're calibrating autofocus based on lens um, uh, camera combinations. So, you know, they might have like a D850 on hand at the Sigma factory where the, where the lens that you bought was produced. And they hook up that uh, lens to the D850 and they calibrate it. But the thing is that it's really a function. The, the precision of the autofocus is a combination of that particular lens that came off the production facility and your particular camera. And both can be slightly off or the combination of the two can be slightly off. And you can end up with a situation where you're focusing on a target. You know, it might be something like maybe say you're doing portraits and the person is not moving. So it's not about motion blur. That's not why you're, you're missing your focus. Maybe you focus on the eye, but you notice that the nose is actually the thing that's in focus. That's a situation that's like a telltale sign that your autofocus needs to be calibrated. And this is the process for doing it. It's relatively simple to do. Some of the lenses that are coming off the lines now, like Sigma and Tamron, are coming with um, like a little attachment, like uh, the tap system with Tamron. And this is actually something you can plug into your lens and it can be calibrated at many, many, many different focal lengths. So you could calibrate at 20 millimeters and 50 millimeters and 70 millimeters, and you could do it at f2.8 versus f5.6 versus f22 or something like that. So it allows you really high precision calibration. And that's something you could do and probably is worthwhile to do. I don't do that actually because it's just to me a lot of work to go through and do every single version of, of this approach. But um, when you do this in-body approach that I've shown you, this, this is an effective way to get a little bit closer um, to focus. And I recommend choosing the focal length that you're using most often. For something like a 24 to 70, where you're kind of doing a range and you're looking at, you know, wide angle landscapes versus like 20, 70 millimeter portraits, you know, it might actually be worthwhile to use the lens-based um, autofocus calibration and to go through that process if your lens has that feature, because then you can get a much more calibrated lens for all of these different purposes that you might use that particular lens. Fixed lenses are really easy because there is only one focal length. So it makes a lot of sense to just calibrate it in body and just calibrate it to that focal length. And I think it's really interesting that the two Nikon lenses that I saw the biggest difference for were both primes. They were both fixed focal lengths, the 50 and the 20. And dramatic, I was actually quite surprised the dramatic differences that I saw when I calibrated these lenses. And you can see it in the images. You can see how much sharper they are after the calibration. So anyway, I hope this is helpful. I hope that you go and calibrate your lenses, do it on like a Sunday afternoon or something like that when, when things are calm. It's, it's kind of a fun activity to do, but I really do think it pays off in the long run. And once you calibrate the lens, it's really good for quite a long time. I mean, you probably should revisit it every couple of years because lenses do shift and I don't know, things can just move in the camera and whatnot that'll affect this. But ultimately, I really think it's a, something you do once, you set it, forget it, and, and never think about it again. So anyway. Hope this is helpful. Let me know what you do. Let me know if you have any questions. Happy to help out. Take care and be well. Bye-bye.